can you tell me more about your experience learning here? Regularly after school, I remember waiting in the lobby, <laughs> just so excited to meet my teachers. Mr. Roma was one of the, uh, also another teacher from Coding Next that helped me establish a very strong understanding in languages like JavaScript and Python, HTML program, all the basics. How does it feel that you get to represent Indonesia in an international competition and especially you also win a gold medal? I think one challenge we faced was not necessarily the coding or the building part, but process of finding ideas. Mm -hmm. We joined the competition expecting to at least let's at least win third uh, like a bronze medal. Mm. You know, we didn't know how hard the competition was. We didn't know what other students would make, but winning that gold medal and representing Indonesia, I guess that was something that like we, we just kept talking about it for like the next few days. It was something to be proud of. What kind of advice would you give to the viewers, the young, the younger? students who aspire to pursue both coding, uh, technology, and maybe also compete in international competitions like you. Just to find something you're really interested in. As long as you have the passion for it, then, you know, like me and my friends, we had a passion for it. We didn't expect to win gold, but through our love for coding and innovating stuff, I guess that really showed how unique our build and how impressive our build was to the judges. Podcast. Hello everyone! Welcome to Codcast, the podcast where we're gonna explore the world of coding, technology, and education with some of the brightest young minds of Indonesia. I'm Levina, your host for today, and welcome to our very first episode. I'm very thrilled to have you here with me today. So, for our debut episode today, we have invited one of Coding Nexus' most successful alumnus. This student, along with his friends, has recently successfully represented Indonesia in an international competition and also won a gold medal at the 2024 Asian Students' Science Fair. Wow, what a remarkable achievement, right? I too am very excited to meet him. I've been looking forward for today. So, without any further ado, let's meet the star of today's episode, Jiwon Lee. Hi, Jiwon! Hello, everyone. My name is Jiwon Lee. I am a student from Gandhi Memorial Intercontinental School. I undergo the IBDP program, and I'm 17 years old, my final year of high school. Ooh, that's nice. Um, Jiwon, we're curious about something like, when was it, when did you realize this passion for science and technology? Well, I had a liking towards robotics since a young age, I think seven or eight. And um, through that process of learning how to program and just in general explore the world of robotics, it actually enhanced my liking towards coding and other different aspects. Ooh. So were there any like influences from, let's say, your family, your friends, your teachers that ignites this passion for you? Um, actually, uh, I would like to thank my school, Gandhi Memorial Intercontinental School, as they regularly hold exhibition programs or personal projects that actually helped me explore my passion for robotics and coding more thoroughly as I had built several passion projects that overall helped me explore this whole different genre or a different community mm, of so technology. Your school really supports their students in this way, huh? Um, I've been with the same school since pre-kinder, almost 12 years, so it's like, it's like the school is basically like my family, like teachers like uh, my principal actually helped me a lot. My principal, Sir A.P. Singh, uh, vice principal, as well as other several important teachers like Miss Winnie and Dr. Manish actually helped me build my base in order to further enhance my knowledge in this journey. Hmm. So maybe I'm gonna start talking a little about Coding Next now. Okay. Uh, I want to know when did you first discover about Coding Next? Like, how did you find out about us, and what inspires you to learn about coding here? Well, I discovered Coding Next from one of my f old friends, as he told me that he was also taking lessons in the center near school, where he was learning different languages like JavaScript, mm -hmm. Python, and at that time. I was very intrigued into that whole, co it was like a whole coding era where I was very into those stuff. So I actually discovered 
the center through him and i was basically begging my mom please let me let me go here let me go here and it's a worth it it was worth it oh it was worth it yeah can you tell me more about your experience learning here well regularly after school i remember awaiting in the lobby well, like an hour or so <laughs> just so excited to meet my teachers mr roma was one of the also another teacher from coding next that helped me establish a very strong understanding in languages like javascript and python html program all the basics so i feel like coding next was also an important journey in my life as they helped me truly understand and navigate through this environment that i was unknown it was unknown to me at that time and mm -hmm. the community the friendliness the environment here is also something that i i missed and it's glad to be back Ooh. So if I were to ask, how exactly did Coding Next help you develop your key skills like coding, problem solving, and things like that? Coding Next regularly hold classes where I would remember they would tr trick, or like not trick, but necessarily test students mm -hmm. into identifying errors that are found within projects. And I guess that's one way of understanding the code thoroughly, as well as just in general, several, like even the most basic lessons like Let's say I took this one class for 3D modeling designing, mm. even though it's not necessarily coding related, it mm -hmm. still actually helped me a lot, which also was another benefit to me as I used those applications in my journey in ASSF as well. Mm -hmm. So you were a student here for around five years, right? Yes, yeah, around Is it five right years. from 2017 to 2022? Yes. Okay. So what were some of your like favorite projects or favorite parts of your lessons during your studying time here? Um, I think something that was a bit more different was app development that mm -hmm. I really liked because mm -hmm. I was more focused on as as my interest really peaked on building something really to mechatronics, like robotics, mm. something that will, is physical that mm. I can touch and see. But mm. with app developing, I think it was a new aspect which also interested me in mm. for a while. So yeah, that, that's one of them. And like I said, the 3D model designing, not mm. though not necessarily it is coding, mm. but it also, I think is a strong foundation for mm. junior or young coders to mm. have an idea on what even the smallest things can help them develop different passion projects. Mm. So more on the web design, what kind of web did you make? Can you like tell me more about it? Um, I designed several like maybe like something as, as simple as just building a calculator mm. or I think a mini like I'm not too sure because it's been a while, but maybe like some games like Ooh. like student-friendly games like mm. like maybe math games Ooh. those i remember fondly so you made the game yourself and then you get to play it too huh yeah with all my friends and the cool. teachers and it was a fun experience i was always excited to attend these classes after school and it's amazing must be fun like it's refreshing to come home from school and get to learn about something that you're passionate about huh yeah okay so maybe i'm gonna circle back to the assf so can you describe how your experience here at coding next help you prepare and win at the assf um so my project was an iot device system mm -hmm. and it used several aspects that i learned from coding next such as the language of python mm -hmm. c plus plus i use some of my knowledge through there as well as the 3d modeling designing like I said, even though it's not related to coding, though it helped me design the product and further establish like what my product looks like to the judges. So I think coding next, the knowledge in coding next actually helped me a lot. Ooh. So for the viewers who might not know about the ASSF, can you like walk us through like what is ASSF and what did you work on? Like how is your project? Can you can you explain it to yeah. us? Um, so ASSF is an ASEAN student science fair, like you mentioned at the start, mm -hmm. and it was introduced to me by a school teacher of mine. And my project uh, focused on developing an IoT device system, a monitoring system for animal activists in uh, Borneo and uh, Kalimantan to help them monitor orangutans in a much more efficient and precise level. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that was my project. Ooh. So 
in terms of the competition itself like how is it like competing on an international competition how do you feel i feel like it was definitely certain points were nervous i was nerve-wracking because i really wanted to win a medal to try see how my project or my skills lied with international level on an international level so mm. as a whole journey i'd say assf was mostly exponentially like it, it was always up and i i really feel like it was just a fun experience where me and my friends that i gathered together mm -hmm. and that we all have our own interest in coding as well mm -hmm. they're all also amaz amazing at their own ways mm. and we just decided through our passion and love for coding let's try attempt in joining a competition and see mm. what happens so going through it you guys are really enthusiastic and looking forward to it and you guys just happens to win because you guys were working together so good so greatly huh yeah mm. okay so when preparing for competing in like competitions and stuff usually challenges are inevitable right so for this specific competition the assf like what are the challenges that you face during the competition i think one challenge we faced was not necessarily the coding or the building part but the process of finding ideas mm -hmm. to stand out among the rest of the competitors as we joined the engineering sector of the con competition we knew there might be we were worried there might be much you know better coders so mm -hmm. we tried finding a specific niche topic that was not really necessarily talked about a global issue that mm. should be more heavily you know t discussed about mm. so yeah i think that was one of the most challenging things like mm. to start where to start Ooh. since you were also studying here for five years how would you say like the experience that you gather here at coding next help you during the competition well during the competition i feel like um and aspects of the question there was a Q&A session in mm -hmm. the ASSF competition mm -hmm. by the panels by the judges where they would ask us questions so it would put us under pressure mm -hmm. but regularly I remember after every um, program in Coding Next mm -hmm. teachers would hold uh, Q&A sessions with parents for students to actually discuss about their final project where teachers and parents can inquire truly what they learned so I think those are very similar situations, very similar environments. So Coding Next uh, helped me prepare in that aspect. Oh, must be nice. Like you're not going to it blind. You have yeah. things prepared. That must be good. So we know that the Asian Student Science Fair is a really big deal, right? How does it feel that you get to represent Indonesia in an international competition? And especially you also win a gold medal. How does it feel? I mean, obviously, it feels good to win, mm -hmm. but I feel like as a team, we were very, we were not, we joined the competition expecting to at least, let's at least win third, uh, like a bronze medal. Mm. You know, we didn't know how hard the competition was. We didn't know what other students would make, but winning that gold medal and representing Indonesia, I guess that was something that we like we, we just kept talking about it for like a next few days it was something to be proud of and even my teammates they were all happy with the results as well of course it's it must be an achievement of a lifetime right like winning in such a big competition an international competition it's such a big deal i mean it sets a solid future for you like a solid foundation for your future like maybe i want to know too what are your future goals after this like after winning such a big competition um I think right now my goal is to get into a good university mm -hmm. where I can major in engineering mm -hmm. and which engineering it it's either with me mechanical or mechatronics mm -hmm. engineering so I think that's my next goal in life where do you set uh, your eye for a university um, there's a lot of universities but uh, I specifically targeted in Canada and Ooh. there are several good universities there like Waterloo mm -hmm. University of Alberta Mm. University of Guelph and just those type of universities are my main goal right now. So why Canada? Well, Canada, I think, has a solid foundation for engineering. And my sister also actually studies there. Oh. And 
exp- knowing what she experienced mm-hmm. and the fact that like those schools that i mentioned have this program called co-op which lets students study for six months and work for six mm-hmm. months to build a good cv for work later i feel like it's a it's it's a beneficial thing especially it being in a completely different country because mm-hmm. i'm used to living in indonesia for mm-hmm. my whole life so i think canada is an ideal place to study mm-hmm. in I see that you have a clear goals for your future, huh? Yeah. I hope you. I really hope you get to achieve everything. By the way, Thank but uh, I think your answer also makes me wonder. Like, how do you see coding and technology as a part of your goals and your future? Well, my goals are always to innovate something that I'm passionate about. Whether, not necessarily, I always have the idea on what I want to make, but. Mm. Through robotics or like mechanical or mechatronics engineering, mechatronics engineering as one of my goals. I feel like it needs a lot of coding, a lot of innovating, a lot of problem th- problem thinking. You know. Mm, I see. I see. So you uh, you clearly have coding and technology as a clear part of your future. Huh? Yeah, I do. Okay, I see that you're very passionate about it. I think <laughs> we're starting to enter our last question. Wow, I can't believe that it's very. Quick oh. talking to you. I had fun. Uh, talking about dreams and goals. This is the final question, I think. Uh, what kind of advice would you give to the viewers, the young, the younger students who aspire to pursue both coding, uh, technology, and maybe also compete in international competitions like you? I feel like um, as my advice mm-hmm. would be just to find something you're really interested in as long as you have the passion for it then you know like me and my friends we had a passion for it. we didn't expect to win gold but mm. through our love for coding and innovating stuff i guess that really showed how unique our build and how impressive our build was to the judges so i think the advice i'd give is to start anything with a passion with a mm. clear goal as well as again to stand out from the rest of the competition make sure your project is niche unique and something that's not really readily talked about in within the coding or like the engineering environment mm. uh, so for the viewers watching who might be wondering on whether or not they should learn coding they should start learning more about technology do you have anything to say to them if students are interested in the field of technology it's a wonderful tuition center as it fosters a friendly environment it's like a family it's basically my second home as well oh. and, um, Um, it helps nurture basic understanding of coding as well as, as we, as the student graduates through from junior coder to pro coder, mm-hmm. I feel like then they can also understand a much like coding and technology in a much more, I think somewhat advanced level. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it's, that's what I'd say. Oh, that's great. Okay. So there you have it, folks. The secret to G1 success is to work hard, keep learning with persistence, and to also be creative and think out of the box. Remember, nothing is ever impossible if you set your mind into it. G1 here just proves it here to us today. So if you ever think like, hmm, should I try coding? Should I try technology? Don't just think. Don't just think. If you ever wonder, you just need to start and try because you never know. If you start and try and learn, you can end up like Jiwon, winning a gold medal in an international competition. So why not give it a try? Maybe you can start learning at Coding Next too. Who knows? You might be a future gold medalist too. So I think that's about it for today, Jiwon. Thank you so much for spending your time yeah. here, sparing your time to come and talk to me today. I had a really great time. And once again, congratulations on your gold medal at the ASSF. And maybe for the viewers watching who are also curious about you and they want to keep up to date with you, can you share like your social media handle? Uh, uh, I only have Instagram. You have Instagram. And uh, my Instagram is not underscore Jiwon. No capital. See, that's his ad, guys. I'm gonna have it written down below too. Don't forget to visit Jion's Instagram. Give him a follow and keep up to date with what is Jion gonna be up to next. And that's about it for today's first episode of Podcast. See you on the next episode. Bye. Podcast.